Welcome to Play to Win, where we play to win. Today's video is a deck tech, a little different than normal, and we're talking Splinter Twin in CEDH. Let's get into it. So recently, Callahan from the Mind Sculptors asked me to partake in the Iconic Deck Challenge. Callahan told us to brew a deck based off of an Iconic 60 card deck. This sounds pretty cool to me because this is actually something I do with a lot of my casual decks, but I've never actually done it with a CDH deck. So I decided to go with an Iconic deck that I played against quite a bit, but never actually played with, which was Splinter Twin. When Splinter Twin was big in modern, I was playing a lot of Jund, and I didn't actually ever play Splinter Twin, mainly because I wanted to play the deck that was good against Splinter Twin. So that was that was Jund. That was that deck. Jund had Abrupt Decay and a whole bunch of removal that made it really good against a tempo control deck like Splinter Twin. As I've gotten older, I've realized that it's often better to play the best deck than it is to play the deck that beats the best deck, but that's another point. So when I got to brewing this Splinter Twin deck that could compete at a CDH level, the first things that I know that I needed to happen was to base my deck around blue and red cards. Deceiver Exarch, Splinter Twin, Pestermite, and Kiki Jiki are the main combo of this deck that we'll be transporting into CDH. So we're looking for as many cards as possible that help that strategy out. The main difference from 60 card to CDH, especially with Splinter Twin, is Splinter Twin gets to take advantage of how good counter spells are in 1v1. In 1v1, your counter spells, especially Remand, which was one of the main counter spells of the deck, could basically time walk your opponent. In CDH, counter spells act as a much different thing. A lot of the time, your counter spells are saved to protect your combo or to stop somebody else from winning, and using them as a tempo play is a little bit more difficult because of the multiplayer aspect of things. In 1v1, if you counter someone's one play for the turn and it gets back to you, they wasted their whole turn and did nothing. If you do that in CDH, there's still player 2 and player 3 that get to go not getting their spells countered, so the tempo that you gain from stopping player 1 is negated by 2 and 3. That being said, the blue-red strategy can still exist in a tempo fashion in CDH. We just have to tweak things a little bit. We're going to take a quick break to remind you that I'm still here, and we're going to talk about today's sponsor, Dragon Champions. A fun, free-to-play game available on Android and the App Store. Dragon Champions is a turn-based strategy game with a World of Warcraft visual vibe, but a Final Fantasy play style. There are a ton of different ways to play, like story, tournaments, events, but the best is the arena, where you can go up against other players to test your mettle. There are a ton of champions you can unlock and upgrade. Each one has different abilities and play styles. They also have no intrusive ads besides the one in your play to win video so the developers have provided us with the promo code for players under level 15 for the next 30 days use link in the description and use promo code ptwgift to get ten dollars of loot free along with a new hero major shot a goblin with a machine gun so when i started building this deck i knew i wanted to start with karanos god of storms as the commander karanos is a sideboard option that splinter twin used often against jun decks to make things a little bit more fair and it just seemed like the type of control controlling tempo commander that would most relate to what Splinter Twin was in 60 card. Pestermite and Deceiver Exarch are obviously in the deck to pair with Splinter Twin or Kiki Jiki as your A plus B combo, but we also have Corridor Monitor that combos with both and Goblin Sharpshooter that combos with Splinter Twin. Drift of Phantasms can find most of those three drops, and Zealous Conscripts also works as a combo with Kiki Jiki. I felt like it'd be a little unfair to not include Snapcaster Mage in this deck because it was such a core part of Blue Red Twin for the longest time, and we're obviously including good cards like Gilded Drake, Dockside Extortionist, Hole Breacher, Imperial Recruiter to find the pieces that we need, and Magus of the Moon to round out that package. And when building this version of the deck, I wanted it to reign true to what Splinter Twin was as much as possible. So I'm including things like Serum Visions and Cryptic Command, even though they're not particularly good, I felt in this thought experiment they'd be funny to include. But... As I'm building this blue-red Splinter Twin deck, including things like Remand, I'm realizing that I'm not really sure if this is actually still a CEDH deck. It's definitely an optimized deck, it's definitely a powerful deck, the land count is low enough, the artifact mana ramp is high enough, it feels like a CEDH deck, but at some point there are some things that are off. The inclusion of Serum Visions, the inclusions of Remand, the inclusions of these not really competitive cards. So as I'm building this deck, the Mind Sculptors released their deck tech on Modern Lantern Control, their version of it, which they turned into Yuriko. And as I was watching that deck tech, if you haven't watched it yet, I highly suggest it. As I'm watching that deck tech, I kind of realized that I kind of missed the point on this deck list challenge. This deck that I'm building here is kind of almost a meme deck. It's probably powerful enough. It's just not getting that CDH competitiveness that I might 
I'd want out of a CDH deck. There's a ton of cards in here that I would remove, but because of Splinter Twin and the nostalgia, I feel like they deserve a spot. So as I'm realizing, this is probably more of a CEDH challenge than it is a regular EDH challenge. I start thinking, well, what do I do to make this strategy actually competitive? And instead of directly transcribing a 60 card deck into a CDH deck, which doesn't really work because of the tempo dynamics that you lose, I was curious as to what the Splinter Twin deck would look like if I just took inspiration from Splinter Twin, not directly translate. It. So my thought process went like this. I'm playing Kiki Jiki. I'm playing a creature based combo. I obviously want to add green cards in. If I'm adding green cards in, I'm probably adding birthing pot in because it's a great way to find these combo pieces. And if I'm adding in birthing pot, I should probably add in some type of birthing pod line. The card is just too good. So we'll probably need white for karmic guide and felidar guardian. So at this point we're in four colors and this is actually kind of starting to look like a deck that already exists. Blue Pod. So I decided to make my own little variation of the Evolution decks, and we have Iconic Twin, which is basically a copy and paste of Blue Pod with a couple cards different. The main way to win is probably most likely with Kiki Jiki. It's just easier to find the Kiki Jiki combos via Survival of the Fittest or Birthing Pod, but Splinter Twin is still there. The main issue with Splinter Twin is if it's your turn and you play Deceiver Exarch and on the same turn put a Splinter Twin on it, the Deceiver Exarch doesn't have haste. It's still summoning six. You can't tap it right away to win. Whereas the Kiki Jiki itself has haste. So if you play the Deceiver Exarch and the Kiki Jiki in the same turn, you can win right from there. CDH is a, a format that's based off of explosiveness and being able to do everything that you can right in the same turn. So Splinter Twin loses some from there. But one thing that Splinter Twin is good at is working around rule of law effects, which are actually pretty common right now in CDH. So I do think Splinter Twin has some legs in that, right? And step Deceiver Exarch on your turn, Splinter Twin, you're only casting your one spell there and you can get around the rule of law and still win. And then the rest of the deck is pretty much your standard blue pod deck. We have Dockside Shenanigans as well as a whole bunch of removal. And I'm playing a few more creature stacks pieces than I might normally play. I like adding Dranith Magistrate, Archon of Amiria, and Aven Mind Sensor to decks like this because the format has gotten so fast that if you are not playing an Ad Nauseam deck, I really think you need to be slowing down the game in some way. I mean, this deck can be fast, but you're just not gonna outrace Ad Nauseam decks on the reg. You have to be able to slow the game down so you can make a ton of mana, so you can use some of your one card win cons like Birthing Pod, Survival of the Fittest, or Imperial Recruiter to help you find a win. This final version of the deck plays actually pretty similarly to Splinter Twin. You're looking to slow the game down for just long enough for you to fire off one of your combos without really taking full control. You're not a stack stack you're not trying to lock players out of the game you're just trying to throw everyone a little off balance the blue red Karanos deck probably does that a bit more but this four color version of the deck probably has a much higher win rate i would imagine you would probably like playing this deck if you enjoyed playing any of the evolution style decks if you're looking to turn one creature into another creature this is just another version of that style of deck I think it's super fun. It works around rule of law effects pretty well. With Seedborn Muse and Thrasios, you can kind of still get a ton of advantage on other people's turns working around rule of law effect, but I wouldn't bog the deck down with too many of those effects. Some of the strengths of this deck are that it can play around stacks decks without it necessarily being a stacks deck in its own right. You're still very offensive. You have a lot of mana. You have a lot of protection, but you're not wasting slots on a whole bunch of stacks pieces hoping that they clog the board down. You're just using the stacks pieces that really prevent your opponents from winning the game. You want Dranith Magistrate to stop your opponents from casting their commander. You want Aven Mind Sensor to stop your opponents from searching the library. You want Hole Breacher to stop your opponents from drawing cards. And you want Archon of Amiria to stop your opponents from casting too many spells. Those, to me, are the four main stacks pieces that you're looking for. And in a deck with access to so many creature tutors like this one, if you're not looking for a combo, you can look for any one of those to help slow the game down drastically until you can just kind of fall into your combo. How about some test hands? Let's test this pod deck out. Let's test Splinter Twin in CEDH out. Before we figure out the mulligans, we should probably figure out who we're playing against. El Shatop is before us, and, and then us, we are playing Thrasios Brews Splinter Twin. Nigila is in C3, and then after that, we'll go with Kess. Yeah, we'll go with that. Head on over to Moxfield, and boom. There we go. First hand, first of seven. Finale of Devastation, Mystic Remora, Veil of Summer, Dockside Exorcist. Nature's Claim, Dispel, Adamus Carl. We got no lands. We're going to mulligan to our second seven here. This is two lands. Volcanic Island, Savannah. Eldritch Evolution. Force of Will, Narset's Reversal. This card is in here purely of to be an imitation of Remand. Because Remand, I remember being such like a clear 
strong part of Splinter Twin, and that card is pretty bad in CDH, but Narset's Reversal, I think, is pretty close to pretty good, and it, I think it does like a similar role. So for me, that's that's why Narset's Reversal is in this deck. Uh, Birthing Pod and Chain of Vapor. This hand also, I mean, it's got powerful cards in it, and it's got interaction, but there's no ramp, which is the main thing that we're looking for in our hands. We want like a Mana Dork and some way uh, to protect something um, or like interact in some way and then like some way to look for something if that makes sense so looking for like land mana ramp creature interaction of some sorts like removal or counter spell or something a tutor and like a second land and then two anything this is like the main thing i'm looking for in a hand and this hand doesn't have that so let's go to six this hand has a fintorn elves three lands a survival of the fittest a Ristic Study, and a Force of Will. I don't know, do you read it, your hands, in order, or do you read your hands in order of importance? Like, for me, I can't read it Force of Will, Breeding Pool, Verdict Catacombs in order like that. It doesn't make any sense to me. But if I read it, Fine Torn Elves, that's what we're looking for. Three lands, Breeding Pool, Verdant Catacombs, Flooded Strands, and Spells. Survival of the Fittest, Ristic Study, Force of Will. This hand's pretty good. Sucks that it's a six, to be honest. I'm definitely keeping... I'm probably pitching a land, to be honest. I'm playing Fine Heart Elves turn one, holding up Force of Will if need be to pitch the Rhystic Study, and then if not, return to Rhystic Study, and hopefully casting a uh, Survival with Fittest later on. I think I'm probably pitching a land and hoping that the Rhystic Study draws me into more of them. So this is a keep, pitch the land. This hand, we have two lands, Forbidden Orchard and Polluted Delta, uh, Deceiver Exarch, Flusterstorm, Dispel, Force of Negation, Mm, I don't like it. It has a lot of protection. You're probably not dying um, for a little bit, but I just, I really, if there's not a mana dork in the first seven, I'm almost definitely shipping it, I think, or some type of mana acceleration. You just fall behind too quick. You can't survive on counter spells, especially when one of them is a force negation, you go down on cards. Yeah, I would ship this. This hand also looks bad. Um, one, two, three, four, five lands. Dovin's Veto Splinter Twin. There's just not enough going on. We're going to six. Okay, this one. Let's see. At a mulligan to six, we are at currently. This one has no land. That's a bummer. We will go one more to five. <laughs> yeah, all right. This is maybe something. Oh, it's not great, but it's something. Yeah, I think it's keep. Elvish Mystic, Mana Confluence, Birthing Pod, Mystical Tutor, Dranith Magistrate, Eternal Witness, Chain of Vapor. Yeah, on five, you got to keep it. You put Mystical Tutor and Eternal Witness back, and you're just on, like, turn one, Dork, turn two, Dranith Magistrate. Hope it goes well from there and eventually get to Birthing Pod. Yeah, we, we, we draw our first turn. Ooh, Rhystic Study. So there's a shot. We Elvish Mystic Pass. Hope that we don't die. Okay, we get a land. We did get the land. Shock the land. I think we just... Man, so at this point, would we play Dranith Magistrate or Ristic Study? Um, we're on turn two and we were second. Elsha's probably not out yet. Najila only went once. I think we I think we play Dranith Magistrate now. Have this still shock this in case we want to use Chain of Vapor. And stop everyone from playing their commanders if they haven't done so yet. And then next turn, we play the Ristic Study. Let's also do some mulligans with Karanos, the blue-red version of this deck. We're going to assume that we're in the same pod that we were in last time. First up, we got Force of Negation, Island, Narset, Parter, Rails, Mountain, Pestermite, Peak, and Is It Signet? This hand's good. I think this hand's fine. Turn one, Peak. Draw a card. Turn two, Is It Signet? Turn three, either Narset or Hold Up Pestermite, depending on what we draw. Hopefully, we hit a land. Holding up Force of Negation for most of that time. This is like, this is kind of, this is like the Splinter Twin hand, right? We're hoping we find Splinter Twin or a way to get Splinter Twin or Kiki Jiki at some point to combo with this Pestermite. We have one way to cantrip, one way to counter, one way to maybe control the board. This is honestly a great way to start off. This is what I would look for in a deck like this. This is all you can be after. All right, let's take a look at another one. This hand also looks potentially, well, let's see. Mental Misstep, Zealous Conscripts, Snapcaster Mage, Mana Crypt, Peak again, Misty Rainforest, and Shatter Skull Smashing, which, if you remember, can be played as upside down as a land for three life untapped. This is turn one, Mana Crypt, land, maybe Peak. Not do much more than that. Turn two, yeah, maybe you snap the peak. That doesn't sound very good. 
I mean, you can turn three of the Karanos with a little bit of interaction and draw. This hand's okay. It's very similar to our last hand, to be honest. We have one half of a combo piece, a little bit of interaction, some recursion on the interaction, land ramp. Honestly, this hand, again, is probably fine. We're just cantripping in the early, maybe trying to interact and not die using snap, and maybe we can snap back the mental misstep. That could be possible. Hoping that we find something for the Kiki, and if not, turn three slam in Karanos and trying to draw some cards. I think, honestly, I think I'd probably keep this hand too. Let's look at one more. This one is Chromox, Imperial Recruiter, Scalding Tarn, City of Brass, Time Twister, Is It Signet, and Preordain. This also seems good, right? This also seems good. What do you what do you play though? You definitely it thinks that this is a signet and not a talisman. I would love to land Chromox pitching. I'm not sure yet. Cast is it signet? Probably. I don't know if you want to. If you're casting Chromox, you want to be able to have the preordain. So I don't know if you want to pitch it, but getting rid of Imperial Recruiter or Time Twister seems not good. This kind of depends on what you draw. I would definitely keep this hand though. Yeah, this is another keep. Let's do one more. It has to be. Let's see one bad hand. I have to see one bad hand with this deck. This one is Shatter Skull Smashing, A Braid, Wooded Foothills, Deceiver X Arc, Pester Mark, Mana Confluence, and Talisman of Creativity. This hand is bad. Haha, <laughs> yes, we got one. This one's close, but no good. No, I don't like keeping hands without a turn one play on first seven. It's just, don't, why bother? The, your other cards are so good. This one looks great. No, it doesn't. There's no lands. All right, another mulligan. I was going to say, there's just so many good spells in this hand, but that's why. There's no lands. One more. We're going to six now. That was your second seven six here we're going second so the gemstone is live but we have all lands basically removal and snapcaster this one's a mulligan if this is a five we have to keep just because mana drain is powerful enough to help get us back in the game and we're just playing lango lango we have enough stuff at five we probably put this back whole is probably just better than half of a combo piece that we don't know if we have the other half to and maybe this card back too but yeah that was Splinter Twin in CDH. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us directly, you can do so on Patreon. And also, don't forget, use the link in the description for the game Dragon Champions. For the next 30 days, use code PTWGIFT for $10 of free loot. And don't forget Major Shot. You can still check out our Bonfire store for our awesome t-shirts and sweatshirts. If you want to pick up any of the cards from today, you can do so at our TCG Player affiliate link down below. We have an affiliate link with altar sleeves down below as well. If you'd like to pick up any of the playmats, assigned ones or not, they are available at our website, playtowinmtg.com. Subscribe to our podcast cast on Spotify and iTunes. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time. Okay, let's see if you can guess how many different days this video was shot on. Because it was a lot. Doing a phone game ad! <laughs> <laughs> phone game ad! We made it! <laughs> <laughs>